Hi, my name is Damien Quartz, and I'm going to demonstrate Melodizer, my new plugin. It's based on analog sequencers, but it's got a little bit of a twist to it. Before I get into talking about the interface, I'm just going to play some presets so you can hear what it sounds like. Alright, so that's just a small sampling of a few of the presets. So, as you probably saw, we had some blinky lights going on here. One set are these LEDs along the top in the sequencer section, uh, one for each column of the sequence. And these blink to show you which step in the sequence the sequencer is currently at. The other one was blinking inside of this row here, which is labeled PN, which stands for probability of a note. And those blink when that step in the sequence actually plays a note. But before we get to that, I just want to talk about the clock section for a little bit. This is where you can set the beats per minute. You can set the step. This is how long each step in the sequence will be equal to. Uh, you can see we have all these different denominations here, all the way down to a triplet 64th note. Uh, 116 dot is a dotted 16th note. You can set the swing. And when you increase the swing, that will give you something that sounds like uh, swung triplets. If you set it lower than 50%, then the first of each pair of steps is shorter. We also have these transport controls that allow you to play and pause and stop the sequence. The main difference between pausing and stopping is that if I pause the sequence, then when I unpause, it'll pick up from where I left off. If I stop, then it totally clears all the sounds, all the effects, and resets the sequence back to the beginning. When we have the source set to INT, which is internal, then we'll use the BPM as set in the interface. But if we set it to external, EXT, then it's going to pull the tempo from the DAW. So in a typical analog sequencer, you would have maybe two knobs at each step, a gate and a pitch. The gate knob would tell you how long the note was going to be. The pitch knob would be the pitch of the note. You might have a scale setting that controls what the pitch knob means. In Melodizer, instead of having a pitch knob, we have a probability knob. This lets you set the probability that the sequencer will play a note at each step. If it does decide to play a note at a step, then it randomly chooses the pitch based on the settings in the pitch section. So there we have the key, which is the root note of the scale. 
We have the scale itself, and there's all the typical scales to choose from. Fingered, we'll talk about it later. Monotonic means it only uses the root note. We have the octave setting, which is the lowest octave the notes from the scale will be chosen from. And this is a midi octave, so octave 4 contains middle C. And then range is how many octaves notes can be chosen from, and that can go up to like 10. So if our range is 2 and our octave is 4, then that means we can choose notes from the key of C in the major scale in octave 4 and 5. And that would sound like this. First is a range of one, which is more like this. So all that randomness is nice, but if you're working on a song, you probably want to be able to reproduce the same randomness every time that you play the sequence. So for that, we have the seed control over here. Now, when the seed is zero, every time that you play after being stopped, it will reseed the random number generator with a different number. So the results will be different even with the same settings and all the knobs. If you pause and then unpause, it won't reseed the random number generator, it'll just pick up from where I left off using the same generator as it goes. But if we set seed to a specific number, like 1, 2, 3, then every time we stop and then play again, it'll sound exactly the same. But different seeds produce different results. So as you're designing your sequences, you might play around with different seeds until you find one that you like. So when the sequencer triggers a note, it's going to play a tone using one of the voices of the synth. Uh, you can set it as low as 1 or as high as 32. Fewer voices means you might have tones that get cut off. Each tone has its own amplitude envelope and panning setting. You set the pan position using the LR knob of the step, and that's just your left and right panning. The LR knob on each step is scaled by the global width setting. So right now width is 50%, so hard left is actually only 50% off to the left. And the same with the right, of course. So you can generate some nice uh, stereo width variation and then control just exactly how wide that goes using the global width. The amplitude envelope is your typical ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, release. There's a global ADSR setting, which is given in seconds and percentage for the sustain level. The percentage of the global sustain will be relative to whatever you set in the V knob for the step. So 100% on V would have attack go up to an amplitude of 1 or full volume. And then when we decay to, say, 50% in the global sustain, then that's going to go to 50% of whatever that V knob was. The attack, decay, sustain, and release knobs of each step are used to scale the values in the global settings. So we set a step attack at 50%, and then global in one second. Then whenever that step triggers, we're going to get an attack of half a second. So let's bring up this bass grind preset, and then we'll randomize the decay lengths, and you can hear what that sounds like. And you can use any of these random buttons under the labels here to randomize the settings of an entire row to set you up with something interesting. So now I want to point out these settings at the top of each step, which is the step mode switch. These are similar to a switch you might find in an analog sequencer, 
and they let you configure how the sequencer behaves at each step. Norm just stands for normal. When the sequencer reaches one of those steps, it'll look at the probability knob and then figure out whether to play a note or not. The skip setting means that the sequencer will entirely skip over that step when it reaches it and look for the next step that's set to norm, and it'll evaluate that instead. You can see that happening by watching the lights at the top. Skipped steps will not blink. As opposed to when I set these probabilities to zero, you will see the lights blink, but you'll never get a note. So for rests, you set probability to zero, and to jump over a step entirely, you use skip. Setting a step to loop will make the sequencer jump back to the beginning of the sequence instead of evaluating that step. And these can be automated as well. So Melodizer will take MIDI input and generate MIDI output. For MIDI input, it listens to notes, and any notes that it receives will use those to change the key and the octave in the pitch section. So if it receives a MIDI C4, then the key will change to C, and the octave will change to 4. The scale itself won't change. However, the other way that you can use this is by setting the scale to fingered, and then all of the MIDI note-ons that Melodizer receives will use as a pool of pitches to choose from when it's choosing the next note, and then those are removed from the pool whenever it receives a note off. So I've added a MIDI clip to my track here, and you can see that when I play, it's going to use notes only from that clip. So it turns it into a kind of randomized arpeggiator. As far as output goes, every time that it triggers a note at a step, it sends a MIDI note on with that note number. And so if you have a synth that's downstream from Melodizer and you don't want to use the built-in synth, you can turn the volume all the way down, enable that synth, and you will hear the notes played there. <laughs> And, of course, you can mix them. So the downstream synth doesn't get the panning setting, and it doesn't get the ADSR envelope, but it does get the note number, and it gets a velocity as set by the V knob for the step. So that's about it for what I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, I know I didn't talk much about the built-in synth and effects, uh, but I would encourage you to just play around with those and see what you can come up with. Melodizer is available for free on itch.io, and there's a link in the description. Uh, the code for this plugin is also open source, and you should be able to find your way to that from the itch.io page. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have fun playing around with it.